All right, so let's talk about advantage now. Um, advantage is one of the biggest part of Bayo's um, part as character, I would say, and one of the main reason. I mean, no matter how Bayo would play, I would still play her, but her being so advantage driven, I love it. <laughs> I really do love it. So. Uh, Bidina has one of the most aggressive advantage stage in the game. Being relentless is part of a core as a character and how your perception of advantage with Bayonetta should be. Um, I'm not talking about like combos because it's something else. Um, but, uh, but I'm talking about faces of advantage such as, such as juggle, edge guard, ledge trap, ledge, ledge guard and corner pressure. So I'm going to talk about like her general advantage and how I see it before diving into like counter pressure, juggle, ledge guard, ledge trap, and edge guard, basically. So general advantage, how I define it with Bayo. Um, so for me, I think uh, being a strong and oppressive advantage is defined by movement, uh, baits, and maximized punishes. Because I've seen like really good players play Bayo. Uh, that I know personally, and their punish game is not as strong. Their combo game is not as strong. They could go for I wouldn't I wouldn't say like riskier plays, but things with a lot more reward. But that also incites a lot more risks. And they don't play that way. They're way too passive. They have a very like defensive play style to begin with. And that holds them that hold the, that um, holds them back really severely when it comes to like um, maximized maximizing their punish game and pushing as much as they can their advantage game and also with that uh, their uh, combo game as well. Um, so taking advantage quite literally then. Uh, of every single hit counts, especially in complicated matchups where entering advantage stage becomes quite difficult and rare, especially against zoners. Uh, if you have like, Bayo doesn't struggle against zoners, but I struggle personally against zoners because I just am not that good against zoners. So for me, uh, having one opening, I need to like, if I am like 130% behind in my opponent and at zero, if I hit you, you need to die. That's my, my, my perception of things, like, literally. So, racking up damage is the name of the game for the Umbran Witch. And I love it. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, and so has her advantage stage. Uh, so, you need to oppress the opponent, force them to do a mistake, and punish them until death. Uh, basically, this is how I see it. And if I put you in disadvantage, and it, the second I enter advantage stage, you need to stay there as long as you can because I'm not letting go of those persons. I want you to die as fast as as fast as possible, basically. Um, something interesting, uh, since we just talked about neutral right before, uh, entering advantage stage is the hard part, but it's up to you on how long you're keeping your opponent in disadvantage. So playing around your neutral, which is why we talked about it right before, uh, no matter what form it is, because a lot of people just think neutral in different matters, but also because you can approach neutral with different uh, components. Uh, with like, uh, with punishing, show pressuring, uh, like we've just seen, reads and call outs on options, a simple grab sometimes, uh, outspace an option, you can overshoot the opponent, and so on and so forth. These are different things that can happen in neutral for you to win neutral, but it's not about like, okay, neutral 101, how do I win it? Like, you know? And those things, uh, and, you know, playing around her neutral is going to be vital, and a good mastery of a neutral execution is required to enter that phase uh, as frequently as possible. So, if you're not that good in neutral, but you have 
really good punish game and really master mastery of the, of her combo, it's not going to be that much of a problem because, like we've like we've um, like we've explained before, if you you can lose twice as much of you can lose twice as much uh, neutral if you do twice as much damage when you have when you get a, sim a single hit, right? But if you can win twice as much neutral and do twice as much as, as damage, it's even better, right? So that's uh what you should strive for as well so some people would say that it that it is logical that because um neutral leads into advantage stage or neutral can lead into disadvantage because you can get hit as well but here we're talking about advantage so neutral leads into advantage but there are no textbook answer on how to win neutral at least not when you're learning it like there's not like a universe, like universal smash related answer. Just like if you want to win neutral, you have to do that, right? Because not every single character can play the same. You're not playing against the same character, the same character over and over. You're not playing against the same player over and over again. So it's very different every single time, and you need to understand that because there are so many different elements being played when you're playing a game. So that's really important. So there is no textbook uh, answers to win your true, at least when you're not when you're learning it, uh, when you're learning about it. Sorry, um, how? Uh, at least not when you're learning about it, how it's built, and how it functions, because you can understand like how neutral is. You can put a definition on it. You can explain it to people that don't play fighting games. So that's what I mean by that. Um, you can win your true with many different interactions. Are not like footies or rps or stage control based the ones that are more shown and explained when uh neutral is being talked about but moving efficiently with bayonetta is a core component to enter advantage stage to perform baits uh play with pokes and judging ranges correctly and etc uh, these are the keys to enter a fierce advantage stage and to, and to execute what Bayonetta does best, putting on damage like no one else. And I truly mean it because I think she has the best combo game in the whole entire game. And I'm not talking about like one tap kind of kind of character because it's not Kazuya or, or Steve, um, which I no hate against those characters. I don't care. Uh, Steve is fucking boring as fuck, and Kazuya is as well, so no one cares. Um, but that's pretty much that right um uh, that's how i see her advantage in general and yeah so now let's go over juggle uh because it's kind of it's quite interesting because she doesn't approach juggle the same way as other characters so uh juggle with bayo is quite weird <laughs> because she's not good at it. Uh, Bear is not particularly good at juggling. She doesn't have that that good up air for juggling, like um, Palu up air, Peach up air, um, like Lucina up air, like up airs that are, like kind of have that that rainbow kind of um, shaped or that have huge hitbox, that huge hit, that huge hitbox that can hit like the opponent from like very far away. So, she doesn't have that. She doesn't have that up air that is made for juggling, right? Um, therefore, she has to approach like juggling in a different way. Um, the main scenario where juggling happens is where uh, you have to juggle with Benita after up throw. At higher percents because at lower percents is kind of different because it's a whole entire system that is unique to her it's something different so the juggling part is pretty much a guide on how to use up throw efficiently basically <laughs> uh, so it's like yeah it's pretty much on how to maximize up throw basically or optimize whatever however you want to see it or call it but it can be applied at any time where you have to juggle, basically. When you first up throw them, so like that, um, you need to see what they do, but you kind of need to be ready to react to what they do as well. Uh, 
Like, if my opponent is air dodging, I need to be able to read, to read that, right? Not read it, but at least react to it, because if I jump, if I up throw and I jump, basically, I am in that in-between where if they air dodge, I can fast fall, and if they jump, I can jump cancel up B. Jump cancel which twist, and I will catch them. But also, they can jump away, and I can just, like, jump, which, which, um, jump ABK as well. Um, so basically, you kind of want to be in a, in between. So the, personally, I what I do is that I up for them, and I can jump with with them, and I see what they do. And sometimes I just I sometimes I just crouch. I I grab them, I up throw, I crouch, and I air dodge, and I and I do this, and I get like you know a platform reset, and I combo them with like a dagger combo or however form of extend I can have on that said combo. So that's how you can start that. Um, so basically you can up throw, be prepared to any option. Sometimes it's going to be like jump or air dodge, but they can also be an aggressive option. Like um, a Mario mashing Nair out of this out of hit stun, that can happen. Um, you get the data, but also you can react to it if you can, uh, which is super important. But so that's like a really low person, like even at zero, that can happen. Uh, depending on certain characters you're playing against, uh, you know that because of their stats, like Bowser, for instance, I play. I have a couple Bowsers in my. In my I have two Bowsers in my region, in my local scene. Sorry, where I struggled against Bowser. I used to struggle against Bowser, but I don't anymore. Let's go, woo! And <laughs> girl, and I up for them, and they don't air dodge. They literally just jump, but the fact that their stat is they're so slow in the air, they can just like jump up air with them because they don't go anywhere. And I know that I know that in certain matchups I can do that. I can just jump with them and do this, which is pretty good uh, because that is like an automatic guaranteed combo in a platform reasons If we're playing on like PS2 or other stages with platforms, I can literally combo and follow up onto that quite easily and freely and that's easy damage and that means you can push your advantage as far as you can um so at higher percents uh you want to play for stage control if you can because if you up throw them at higher percents uh if you overcome it with like a special that is like the mistake to avoid as a beginner is to go for a special even at, even at, uh, when you're a beginner it's better to just stay on the ground and shark them than just like do something very committal with like a very strong move like wish to acpk but only doing this right because you can also do apk when they jump away like i've explained so you need to force the opponent to pick an option and or to panic with their movement and fake outs when the the opponent is in the air. You can shark them and catch their landing which might actually lead into a platform pressure uh, situation because maybe you up throw them, you just jump with them and they will air dodge into the platform and you're behind them and they shield. They land here and they shield. Well now I'm in a position where I can shield pressure them on a platform, so platform shield pressure them platform pressure sorry and you can do crazy stuff real good crazy stuff lovely and it's pretty good so if you have to platform pressure uh, like in that situation uh, here for instance you want to prioritize movement over aggressiveness but also baiting options because sometimes they will try to a lot of people will just try to jump out of shield when they're being platform pressured especially when you do like if they, they're bad if they're really bad they would do like you would do up tilt and they would jump you do up b if they're not that if they're just bad you would do one move then another move and then you can do another one and they would just get hit by it if they're like okay they will respect your show pressure and you will have to play with movements and just go like that and then up air and then catch them and do stuff like that and they're really good you will have to play with like the fear of your movement and play around that and maybe you maybe go onto the platform and just like 
Oh shit. Why oh, I cannot do it? Do this and then boom boom. You can even like do a backflip and then go onto the platform if I can't do it because I'm so bad and you can do that or you can just go behind them like that and then boom boom and then you can go over something and force interactions or at least put them in disadvantage and yourself in advantage so prioritize movement of aggressiveness but if you want to be aggressive add good movement that uh, that performs as bait mixed uh, with safe pressure when you're plat platform pressuring there are situations that are common and that you will learn with time and experience because like i've said sometimes you would just do like up air up tilt and it would jump and you would just do double witch twist and they would get hit by it it's just a matter of like oh i know that in that situation people tend to do this and then you can base your you can be like oh there are chances that he's going to do that is he going to do this or not if he doesn't if he doesn't do anything if he doesn't do something else i can base myself on my experience and if he doesn't i can take what he does and then adapt and be prepared for the next time this situation happens so that's really good okay edge guarding uh edge guarding is super important with bayo like knowing how to edge guard with bayo is a must it's truly is because if you don't know how to edge guard like Basically, you just miss like 90% of the chance, 90% of the chance to get a stock because most of the time I kill people off stage. I don't, pe I don't kill people on stage. Like I kill people on stage when I do like shitload of damage and I do like a crazy ass clip with like fair one two trains and I get a read and I, I smash them. But off stage is where I kill people because she can stall in the air and just like block your way to come back here like crazy and it's super good and that's what you want to do so there are a few things you need to know about uh, uh you need, there are a few things you need to know before uh knowing how to edge guard basically so one thing that is super important with Bayo is resource management um knowing what resources you have left is absolutely essential when it comes to edge guarding um when it comes to edge guarding your opponent, sorry, uh, and when when it also know when it's time to reset uh, by grabbing the ledge and getting your your resources back, basically. Uh, keeping a mental history or mental track, um, your mental record or history of like what moves you've done and what resources you've used so far. Um, it's something that you can practice by yourself in the training lab and you put yourself off stage and you're just like a beat, a bear jump, beat, a bear jump, ABK, I have nothing left. This, 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 and I come back. Like, it's just now for me it's natural and it's like nature and it's like everything is like muscle memory because I'm just like, oh, I'm used by it, I'm used to it by now. But when you're a beginner, you're just like, oh, I don't know, I'm s I do not feel comfortable going off stage because it's very scary. Yeah, it's very scary stuff. Um, and it's very good. And it's very important to know how to do so. So, you can like do this by yourself in training mode, but you also by watching top level beta, uh, top level beta players like Lima or Bloom if you want to, if you like Bloom as well, uh, and see how they do it, but also figuring out what they have left it's kind of like an exercise some homework if you will like you're just like oh he did that he did that he still has like a jump or witch twist or abk so he can come back here or maybe he's gonna go for this instead because he can kill him right now with that move and then come back with a jump abk for instance i don't know um so that's what you can do another thing um is going to create confusion off stage, and let me explain that because it seems weird. Uh, creating confusion while you're off stage, when you're edge guarding, sorry, is another component of powerful edge guard, and also recovering when you when you're the one being edge guarded is also super important, which is something that we'll talk about later on. 
So adding moves between like your uh, your resources, which your list of resources are going to be the following one. You have Witch Twist, ABK Dive Kick, uh, Jump, and Air Dodge are going to be your main resources. So basically, sometimes instead of just going for double Witch Twist like that and coming back here, you can just like double Witch Twist back here, this, and just like, you know, you can put other things in between, like Witch Twist, up here, back here, ABK, and coming here, right? You can do stuff like that. It's almost similar to kind of doing some planking, but uh, here it's kind of like trying to force the opponent just like, oh, what did she use and how many stuff does she... Because sometimes like I've played against players that are like, I'm so clueless about what you have left and what you like. It feels like you have 13 jumps and 25 other moves that I'm not aware of. I'm just like, that means I've done my job correctly, basically. And you can do stuff like that. It's really good. Really, really good. Um, so. Um, so all of these moves in between. Those resources like an up air, an air, a back air, or something like that. Is going to add uh, a layer of confusion for your opponent. And make them guess what you have left to edge guard them with. Especially also when you're recovering, uh, but sometimes you can just stall in the air with up airs and, and come back like that. And you're like, what the fuck? Like <laughs> sometimes it happens. It's like pretty cool. So once you have a good grasp of those two things, you can learn how to edge guard properly. Um, when it comes to edge guarding, there are some characters that will need only to be pushed further and further up to the point. Uh, where they don't have any resources left to come back on stage. Uh, for example, example that are, for, uh, I mean, examples for that are going to be characters like Cloud, Roy, Aegis, um, Chrome, or anything that is like has very linear uh, recoveries, basically. They are pretty much linear, uh, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that the recoveries are bad though, because these are, these recoveries are pretty good. Uh, but are not as bad as they seem to be. They're just easier to deal with and find counterplay to, especially with Roy when you push, when basically when you're just reducing the amount of options that he have off stage, you can also go for like a witch time off stage. And for Roy, sometimes you have pushed them, they're trying to recover before they jump, you do like an air, you come back here. And they have to jump, and then they jump, and they up B in your witch time, and then you can, you can just, you can just like, up B, you can just like do crazy shit off stage for edge guarding. You can look at like what Lima does because Lima does some crazy insane stuff sometimes. It's really cool. Um, so yeah, but the other arch archetype for for edge guarding is going to be. The one where you need to perform complete combos to complete an entire combo, basically, uh, in order to edge guard them. Maybe because of their strong, uh, their strong annoying recovery, or their weight class, or they're easy to combo, etc. So characters like that are going to be um, heavy characters. Uh, Peach Daisy, a Joker, Palutena, um, Wario. Um, characters like that are that need to be comboed and pushed away because they have pretty a lot of good resources like either unique mechanics or really good resources to come back and it's very important just to do that and know how to do it so that's pretty much how you kind of want to approach edge guarding and edge guarding is also going to be played by also keeping track of like your opponent's uh, resources by like edge guarding them and then coming back and be like, okay, they have this left, they jump, oh, I can go for this, I can go for another that, I can push them here and come back and they're dead because they don't have anything else. They don't have anything else, they don't have anything left. So, yeah, that can be, um, that can be, uh, really good. And yeah, that's pretty much it for edge guarding. Um, okay, let's jump into Let's Trap. Let's Trap is another aspect that Banana is not necessarily good at. Um, uh, 
but um so she has to also approach it in a different aspect and it's also very much up dependent um there are moves that, are, that get the opponent off of the ledge that these are matchup dependent so basically moves like down tilt down smash up smash up smash equal down um uh, heel slide i said heel slide um f tilt three as well are options that can be used for actually getting off the opponent off of the ledge and it's very matchup dependent and i have a resource about that i have an exile moment that i will provide uh but most of the time if you don't know what you what i don't know if you don't know what you're doing with bayo in that in that strap generally what you want to do is play patient and react to what your opponent is doing and taking in the information that he's giving you with like if he's jumping easy jumping easy he's jumping a lot is he doing a lot of grounded options is he being he uh is my opponent being defensive or aggressive is he waiting a lot is he playing around is in in invincibility with the regrab in the grab and stuff like all that kind of stuff can be used for effective in getting data effective ledge up and getting data which is pretty good so uh basically you kind of want to play patient and react to what your opponent is doing uh never do something that risks them to go behind you until you have a read um, you can play regular ledge up. You can play regular ledge up with Bayo, but with Bayo, you have you have more reward at high mid person where you can actually kill. Because back air, um, you can use back air to cover certain options um, and force the opponent to pick one you want them to select, and then you can use back air where you want to use it. So basically, it's all about like. Um, it's a lot of ambiguity and conditioning and patience. So the trapping is not a part of a vanish stage where you can do a lot of damage, but that's why you can kill. Actually, uh, you're not here to do damage on that trap. You're not here to reset and stuff. You're here to kill. So that's why I made high percents is kind of better to a trap. Sometimes I I just wait and see what they do, and then if they roll, I just dash back and put them in a corner corner pressure situation and that transition into this. But one thing that Salem taught me as well uh, is that uh, you can play the... Basically, Bayo has a couple ways to play ledge trap and you can play ledge trap by, you know, playing with back air and covering space and forcing the opponent to pick something and then you can cover it with positioning and playing at roll distance. Uh, so basically, if you're covering like neutral get up, get up attack and uh, jump, they have to roll basically or pick certain options between your timings and you will have to react to that. But if they roll, and if your your back is facing towards the ledge, you can up tilt, and at higher percents, like uh, if I put Richter at like cure percents like that, and I do ledge options, and I make him only roll, I can do that. Uh, also, there are another thing that is quite interesting that I've never seen any Bayo do and that he taught me uh, is that the usage of up air is also really, really good. Basically, up air kind of acts as a, uh, as a sword. as a sword because uh, you can cover certain options with like up air and you can convert that into other things which is pretty good um, so basically up air acts as a semi sword because of the, the angle and the distance so that can catch like ledge jump and air dodges as well you can catch it with like either short hop up air or full hop up air 
because it's character dependent as well. Uh, I'm going to put like inbox visualization on because y'all can see the the up air. Like, so basically up air acts like that. That's the angle of up air. So you can just like catch people like that with up air. Um, and basically like being at wall distance is going to be where you want to be and then you can you want to pressure you kind of threaten with back air you want to threaten with back air and up air uh because you can frame trap them you can catch ledge jump and frame trap uh any air dodges so they have to roll and you can catch um like I've shown with like up tilt because you can you just add roll distance you have just just to turn around or even not even turn around because your back is facing back air and then you do up tilt and you up tilt back air or get a like a very com early combo with that also um, the last and safest option they can go for is new, is no more get up but you can condition this by letting letting them go for this a few times so you make them like oh you know i i didn't cover this i'm so bad and then you actually let them go for this go for this and then you just run up up tilt <laughs> like i've done this and it actually works it's kind of crazy how good it works uh, because they're like oh if he's covering up if he's going roll if he's covering ledge 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 roll i can get up attack on neutral uh neutral get up and then if they do this you can just like run up up tilt and up tilt has pretty good some decent range and it can cover like ground and aerial space which is pretty good and what you want that's why you want to use um a pair uh up tilt sorry um and also because run up up tilt and kill them for free because up to back her depending on the persons so keeping at the roll distance is perfect for any bks and at that distance because also if you're at roll distance over here if they jump you can also apk but it's kind of committal but you can do it if you react to it get up attack uh uh so basically get up attack drop down jump into an attack is non-existent and it's not a threat because they cannot hit you because they're at roll distance and you have your covering ledge roll and you to get up and not true to get up but ledge, uh, ledge jump and air dodge with back air and up air uh up air since we're talking about up air up air since acts as the same high score because of the angle and the distance um you can catch it with like short hop or fastball up air, or short hop or full hop up air because it's matchup dependent and also different because of the character. Against let's jump attack, uh, let's jump or attack, it's going to lose to short hop up air or full hop up air as well because of your position under or above the attack. And up air like that can lead into like back air basically because you can do up air back air oh up air back air which is pretty good and that is really good because if, they, if they're at kill percent they get hit by that well you get the win and you get the kill at least um you go to the ledge and you can go to the ledge also and shield and only do a better shield against normal get up and get up attack and drop down attack and drop down jump attacks because it covers pretty much anything because it's that angle where it's that zone where if you're neutral get up you're still in that same spot if you get up attack you're in that same spot if you jump if you drop down jump into an attack you're in that same spot basically and up b covers that so that's perfect and rule is the only one uh is the only one not covered but if you're aware of it um you can just run up i mean uh 
since you're like only rolling, you can just you're just covering roll. You can just run up shield, and then when they roll, you can turn around up tilt. That's like. That's really good, and like actually, with that perspective, like her ledge trap can be very consistent, but it's not like that really. What I mean by her ledge trap not being good, it's like it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So yeah. Uh, so mixing mixing up those those two styles of of ledge trap can be also good. Also, uh, so essentially to wrap it up before talking about something else uh, essentially pure roll distance with your body to deny or scare them from rolling and you can cover ledge jump with up air or back air if you want to cover normal get up consistently then get up up then you need to get up 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 close and shield and abuse up get up shield against their all of their option except roll they didn't you can just if you react to it because roll from ledge is pretty laggy you can just shield drop into run up up uh, up tilt and yeah that leads into a another component of ledge trap i would say which is going to be ledge guard so a lot of people uh talk about ledge guard as a not the word that is edge guard because you can either people call it the ledge or call it the edge i call it the ledge but i say edge guard even though i say the ledge so people say ledge guard when they talk about like edge guarding but for me i think it's its own thing and its own concepts especially for veo Obviously, she has to be the one. Off stage, if you cut it into two halves, in my opinion, uh, so basically, if you cut the off stage in two halves, the right part is going to be for edge guarding, and the left part is going to be for ledge guarding. I am. It acts as a pressure string that conditions the opponent into picking an option and you punish them because Bayo can move from anywhere basically uh it's almost like an extension um uh, to her ledge trap and can act as a transition for counter pressure as well if ledge guard and ledge trap are not successful so so i'm australian again uh so basically you can do stuff like if Let's say Richter is holding the ledge. I can do Nair, up air, fair, and that covers a lot of options. And then if you try to roll like that, you try to roll, I can jump, ABK. Basically, I can just like jump, up air, ABK, and go get back where I was like 30 seconds ago. That's crazy. So you have stuff like that that are, that are really good. And basically, you can... Um, so ledge guarding is pretty good as well, which is an extension to her ledge trapping. Uh, so Nair and Upper Bullet are on the way back to, to frame trap and punish whatever option they can do. So with that, basically Upper, like, like Nair, like, oh, oops, uh, like Nair and another Nair like that, but you need to be facing that way and then do this in the map. Upper can also be used to catch their jump because it has a lot more like vertical The hitbox is more vertical instead of like being a circle or spin, I guess. Uh, so with that, let's jump and get up attack off the table. These are not options that can be used because they will get hit by it. Like this, and this, and th like you can do this, this, fast forward down tilt. Or you can do this, this, and fair if they're trying to get up. You can do this, this, this if you want. Uh, pretty committal though, and then this. Sometimes people will just roll when you do this. You can do this, this, and then do an up air like that, and they would just get uh, like from here. Let's say Richter rolled here, here. I do this, 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 and then I can just go back here. It's quite good, really good, and I think a lot of players should do that. Um, 
so you can catch rolls with uh, with near uh, near player art ITG up here landing uh, fair as well. If you're going back like that, like this. So it's quite interesting. So keeping an eye on the presents is important since you won't be able to edge guard the opponent at all the time. But you can make ledge trapping consistent in many different ways with those elements and with like regular ledge trap and also ledge guarding. And ledge guarding is quite good. It's really good. So uh, let's talk about corner pressure. Corner pressure is one of my favorite things with Bayo because it's where she can actually get damage. Corner pressure has been has been in its game. It is just as good as her edge guarding, to be quite honest. Uh, being able to apply elements over strong evasive movement and to use to use it at baits as baits, sorry, is extremely good for corner pressuring. So basically being unpredictable and ambiguous in using dashes like in and out are pretty good to force the opponent to swing and then punish them with like jump abk basically. You want to use your safe pokes like down tone to play with the opponent and stay outside of their range for better reaction as well as positioning for punishing. That's super important because you don't want to overcome it with like a dash in that is too long or a dash back that is too far away and allows them to dash in with you. But also that can be also a bait and you can dash back and down tilt or even just turn around and dash tag or even turn around F tilt. That can be also good to stop them out. Um, but also you kind of want to play that range where you're under the platform where you can have control over like all around that above, around, under, in front of the platform where you can actually control everything. And that's quite good and also if people try to jump you can abk and they try to full hop uh same thing like real good uh so your goal is to stay outside of their range all the while pressuring them with uh, uh pressuring them sorry and making them feel like they don't have as many options as they do you want to make them scared and make them panic that's what's really good about uh Beos chrono pressure um, so using your max, uh, your max range, ABK, your max ABK range is a valid usage of corner pressure if they try to go past you with a jump or a double jump. Also, you should not shield. Shielding will make you less intimidating, and it will not make. Um, it will make your advantage stage go down by a lot. But you can also like just like go like dash and shield and just like jump back or just dash and shield up B and like, go on a platform because that's a valid stuff you can do because it's the same principle as doing dash shield in neutral basically um, also don't go for grabs because if you're with grabs they can just like grab you and back throw you and it can also punish you it can just like jump over you like really easily um, and if they shield, you can shield pressure them or eventually kill. Uh, wait for them to let go of shield because sometimes it's like... Characters like Ness or Palutena, when they're shielding, they're usually waiting for you to do something and then grab you and then back throw you, especially when you are kill persons. Or at least in that range when that back throw is really effective. When it comes to pressure, uh, ask yourself, what can, what can they do to avoid my burst option? How can I cover this without committing? That's what I think when I'm playing. It's like, like when I'm counter pressuring. This is the that, these are the two main questions I'm, uh, that I ask myself. What can I do to avoid my uh, my burst option, and how can I cover this without committing? Because if you dash attack and they space it out, they I mean they outspace it. Sorry. They are even more cornered, then you can sit outside of their range and be guaranteed to not get hit while pressuring with ABK at max range. And while pressuring them, if you end up 
if you end up show pressuring your opponent dash back and they can't so they have to to either do nothing else do nothing or answer with like an oppress with like an offensive out of shot of uh, up with an um, offensive option out of show and you can punish that with like a jump apk or whatever basically the same principle of like show pressure base turn pressure basically <laughs> and yeah so they can like and you can take the advantage uh, of this and punish them on your way back especially if their option makes them move forward um, you also need to take in consideration the fact that platforms are at times right above you like here for instance it's like a perfect example of that you need to keep an eye of your of them if your opponent wants to use them to get out of the corner and you can preemptively cover them with like moves like up air uh i said up air air back air uh fair can be also used uh back air i also use a lot of up tilts raw back air raw up airs uh so you have stuff it's pretty good Another element that I haven't talked about is going to be tech chasing as well, but tech chasing is not as prominent with Bayo, IMO, but it's also really important to talk about it. So I'm just doing a small part about I'm just doing a small part on small part on tech chasing. Sorry, Nibiru Bayonetta is not a tech chase based character like Inkling or Pichu, which is where they get the damage. Uh, that's the that's their main uh, source of damage. Plus, the, their kit is built and designed around that. Basically, um, some of the strong and situational take chase uh, happens on platforms where you can actually extend your advantage stage into a combo and deal tons of damage. Uh, a pair is really good for that. Uh, basically, you can just like do down to fair, and that will put that will put them into a take chase situation. And then if they take, you can just do up air, and you can do like. A pair fair, or you can do like a pair raw pair like that, and you can go into raw pair, a pair, a pair, and then back air sometimes, or maybe you can do like a pair, raw pair, raw pair, and then go for like a ladder combo at the end to extend your combo even more. So a pair is really good for that, and also. Um, on the ground, you can have universal option for take chasing, uh, like dash attack, um, uh, for take chasing you can also use just like dash and dash back or just like read a roll and just like F smash or just like go for a grab, that's like the main universal smash things I guess. And then you can also use like kill slide and you can also use dash attack and also called stiletto which is the true word the true name for dash attack but uh yeah so that's pretty much how you can play her advantage and it's quite extensive it's pretty big i love it it is pretty pretty good so yeah that's about it for advantage and we're going to move on to disadvantage and her disadvantage is not as extensive but it's it's worth talking about because you need to have a disadvantage section if you're talking about advantage and then we'll, we'll have two more sections that will be done so that's pretty good uh so yeah let's just jump right into it <laughs> 